This number, 226, is the percentage increase in the size of Poland's economy GDP per capita since the fall of communism in 1990. In the last 30 years, Poland's economy has grown more than tenfold, which is genuinely meteoric. This makes it the most successful economy in Europe during that time, recording an average growth rate of 4% in Europe. Poland is located between two rival superpowers, Germany and Russia, and it has had a challenging past. Just in the briefest of terms, Poland was wiped off the map in the 18th century, and it was invaded from both directions, Germany and Russia, in the 20th century. So, how has that longer-term history shaped its present-day political and economic identity? Poland's rich history is a captivating journey through time. It all began around 2000 BC with the emergence of Poland's first civilization. However, the turning point came in AD 966 when the region's disparate tribes were united under the Slavic chief Mieszko, the first ruler of Poland and the founder of the first independent Polish state. Fast forward to the late 1500s, Poland and Lithuania joined together and formed a large, powerful commonwealth with elected kings. By the late 1700s, however, Poland had been weakened by a series of wars with its neighbours. In 1795, it was conquered and divided among Russia, Prussia, now Germany, and Austria. The once mighty nation vanished from the world map, its existence denied for 123 long years. It was an old story to the people of Poland. Conquest, subjugation, enslavement. It had happened before in Poland's troubled history, but never with such inhumanity. After World War I in 1918, Poland was restored as a sovereign nation. However, just 21 years later, Germany and the Soviet Union attacked, intending to divide Poland between them. This aggression marked the beginning of World War II. Finally, in 1947, Poland was re-established as effectively a satellite puppet state of the Soviet Union. A new phase of economic and social development started under communism, which is arguably, in the long run, an economic failure. However, it didn't start that way. For better or for worse, one thing that Soviet dominance in the area and the common rule of the Communist Party did was industrialize Poland particularly in the mining and manufacturing sector. In 1989, when the Iron Curtain finally fell, Poland found itself on the brink of economic collapse. It had a large, inefficient agricultural sector, terrible roads and rail links, and an economy no larger than that of its neighbour. A stereotype had been created for Poland, a big, poor country with shambolic governments, dreadful roads and eccentric habits old stereotypes die hard, but the facts paint an increasingly different picture. By the grim standards of recent centuries, Poland has never been more secure, prosperous or better run. If becoming rich is challenging for individuals, it is even more challenging for nations, especially for a nation that was nearly bankrupt. Out of more than 190 countries tracked by the International Monetary Fund, fewer than 40 are considered wealthy or advanced economies. The rest are being referred to as emerging nations, and many of them have been in the emerging category for a long time. The last large country to enter the advanced class was South Korea, 20 years ago. The next major nation likely to join that club could be Poland, an under-the-radar economic star. So, how did Poland become an unlikely island of economic success? In the early 1990s, rigorous economic shock therapy put Poland on the right track. Market-oriented reforms included removing price controls, restraining wage increases, slashing subsidies for goods and services, and balancing the budget. The cure was painful, but after a couple of years of sharp recession in 1990-91, Poland started to grow again. It has not stopped since, and received a further boost when it joined the EU in 2004. Since then, economic growth has averaged 4% a year. GDP per person at purchasing power parity is now 80% of the EU average, compared with 39% in 1990. Moreover, Poland was the only major European country that didn't experience a recession during the financial crisis. This was due to a combination of luck and effective fiscal and monetary policies. Poland's flexible exchange rate for the złoty, 
limited reliance on international trade, and low levels of household and corporate debt also contributed to its resilience. This strong economic performance has elevated Poland's extra weight in the EU, both economically and politically, making it one of the key member countries alongside Germany, Britain, France, Italy and Spain. However, Poland's economic success was made possible due to its utilization of the industrialization legacy from the communist era. By attracting foreign investments from Western countries, Poland was able to stimulate its domestic production and integrate its economy into global supply chains. As a result, Poland, along with its neighboring countries in the Visegrad Group, has become a significant player in industries such as automotive and electronics. Domestic firms in Poland serve as suppliers to international manufacturers, particularly those from Germany. Poland is following a path similar to the Asian success stories by becoming a manufacturing powerhouse. Even though this journey is more challenging today, manufacturing is declining as a share of the global economy, and with China taking much of this shrinking pie, only a few major manufacturing nations are expanding their share of global exports. This select group of around half a dozen countries includes South Korea, the Czech Republic and Poland. First and foremost, Poland has made significant progress in establishing a favorable business environment. They have embraced economic reforms, encouraged innovation and developed a strong infrastructure that attracts both domestic and foreign investments. Poland's strategic geographical location at the crossroads of Europe has also positioned it as a gateway for trade and investment, which has further fueled its growth. Poland is the largest country in Central and Eastern Europe and the ninth largest in Europe. 65% of its population is at working age, which means a workforce of 22.7 million people. The combination of human capital and cheap skilled labor attracts foreign entrepreneurs to invest in Poland. Each year, Polish universities produce 37,500 engineers, ranking second in the EU after Germany. The presence of talented and well-educated employees, along with a supportive environment for startups, has attracted the most venture capital investments in the region. Additionally, Poland's focus on education and skills development has helped cultivate a talented workforce, which is a crucial asset to today's competitive global landscape. Since 2000, Poland has spent an average of 4.5% of GDP on education, which is above EU average. It consistently ranks among the top 5 or 6 in reading, math and science out of 38 OECD countries, outperforming wealthier nations like Britain, France or Germany. This strong educational foundation lays the groundwork for continued robust economic growth. Poles also work hard, on average 39 hours per week, more than the notoriously hard-working Americans and well ahead of British, French or German counterparts. One of the most important features of the Polish economy is its large domestic consumer market, which makes up 61% of GDP. This exceeds the EU average and has similarities with the US. Household consumption, driven by a robust labor market and wage growth, is expected to continue as a key driving force for the Polish economy. In terms of infrastructure investments, Poland has been the largest beneficiary of EU funds, receiving 102 billion euros from 2007 to 2013 and 106 billion euros between 2014 to 2020. This has significantly benefited the construction and real estate sectors, fueled by infrastructure projects and the expansion of global service centers in Poland, with international companies such as IBM, Citigroup, Credit Suisse and Capgemini relocating part of their operations to Poland. It has also managed to tap into robust sources of innovation in the new economy. One of the fastest growing sectors is video game development. A report by the Polish Agency for Enterprise Development has found Poland's video gaming workforce as one of the largest in Europe. The report, titled The Game Industry of Poland Report 2023, highlights that the Polish games industry is growing consistently with record numbers year after year. Currently, there are over 300 game developing companies operating in Poland, and over 20 are listed on the Warsaw Stock Exchange. However, the fact is that Eastern European growth has heavily relied on capital and expertise from the West. Foreign companies play a significant role in Polish exports and employ a large portion of the workforce. This means that profits are often transferred abroad, which weaken the ability of domestic firms to scale up. 
Poland is setting records in terms of foreign direct investment FDI, inflows, and it is well positioned to benefit from the global trend of nearshoring supply chains. However, FDIs come with a double-edged sword. They stimulate growth but also reinforce reliance on external sources and may discourage local investments in domestic economic capabilities. For instance, in the entire Central and Eastern European region, only one company, the Polish state-owned oil refiner PKN Orlen, appears on the Fortune Global 500 list. The biggest challenge for Poland's economy is to avoid the middle-income trap and prevent getting stuck at its current level. Poles are not saving and investing enough for the economy to transition from being Western Europe's primary subcontractor to one with global, innovative Polish companies. Over the last 10 years, the average saving rate has been only 21% of GDP, and the average investment rate has been 24% of GDP, both below the EU average. The country currently allocates less than 1.5% of GDP to R&D, roughly half the Western European average. Demography is another concern for Poland's economy. It has one of the lowest fertility rates in the EU and continues to experience emigration. Approximately 2 million Poles emigrated after the country's entry into the EU, with about half of them moving to the UK. Mass emigration was driven partly by unemployment at home, which remained persistently high for many years, but it has now reached its lowest level since 1990. Moreover, Poland faces a significant challenge in transitioning to clean energy, as it has the most fossil fuel heavy energy mix in the EU. If the necessary investments are delayed, this could impact the competitiveness of the Polish industry, which has been the primary driver of growth so far. Poland's booming economy plays a crucial role in the EU's response to the war in Ukraine. Its strong economic growth in recent decades has made investments in advanced military equipments like modern tanks and aircraft possible. Additionally, Poland's flourishing enterprise sector and increasing demand for labor has allowed the company to efficiently accommodate a significant influx of refugees. The ongoing historical events are unlikely to significantly impact Europe's balance of power. The European Union is primarily founded on trade and economic interests, and Poland currently holds a peripheral position in this institutional framework. However, it will require a genuine commitment to nurture domestic economic capacities in the landscape of a globalized and fast-paced economy. And in Poland, such a commitment is still largely confined to the realm of political speeches and wishful thinking. But at least they carry their heads high when they go. These days, Poland's voice abroad once again counts for something.